Look, I sound like a hater right now, so let me just make this clear. I want Starfield to be amazing, and I want Bethesda Game Studios to succeed again. I want them to be genre-defining again. So yeah, Bethesda, you lost me. I really, really hope you can get me back. We've gathered here for your private funeral. The public has no idea you're gone. We're going to make it appear as if you're still alive. Is Phil. it coming? Sarah. What do you know? So Bethesda. it's finally gone for good, huh? Too bad. I guess that means there won't be anything interesting to look forward to anymore. Everything that was in my way is gone, and everyone else still believes in me. It's only a matter of time before I get rid of the exclusivity. What do you think of that? Todd. This is my perfect victory! That's right! I win! Did you say you no longer have anything interesting to look forward to? Xbox fans. Well, I promise that won't be the case. From now on... I'm going to show you the total destruction of the Xbox brand. One of my earliest videos was a critique on modern day Bethesda Game Studios. I fought through my allergies and recorded a nasally recap on how Bethesda lost a diehard fan, me. And one of the most interesting parts about that video now is that it was 9 months before Starfield. There was still an air of hope about the game. It was going to be BGS's first offering after being acquired by Microsoft. It was a new IP, which people are always excited for. Just look at Metaphor Refantasio. People were super happy and excited for that game when it was announced because it was a proven developer tackling a new setting, a new world, and that's always fun and exciting. Personally, I was never that excited for Starfield once I heard a lot of it was going to be procedurally generated. That's not really my cup of tea or coffee in this case. But what did the fans say? What did the critics say? We all know how that story ended. Neither of them really loved the game. Starfield currently sits at a mixed reputation on Steam, and what's crazy about that is there's over 100,000 reviews. And while I do think user reviews should be taken with a grain of salt, because I think The Last of Us Part 2 has like a 50 on Metacritic, which is just false, that's just not true, the user reviews on Starfield on Metacritic are in the mid-60s. While many, myself included, would argue that numeric scores aren't like the most useful thing in the world, I do think they're still good indicators, it kinda gives you an idea of the quality of the game. Like when's the last time you've played a game that you felt was truly a 10 out of 10 and then you go on Metacritic and it has like a 5 out of 10, that's just doesn't really happen. And listen, I only played Starfield for maybe 30 minutes. I'm sure it's not an awful game, I'm sure it's not a bad game, but this is Bethesda Game Studios we're talking about, since when is not awful the standard we set for them. It wasn't supposed to be like this for BGS. And to make matters worse, Starfield Shatter Space was a DLC that was announced a while back and it was promised to be a return to form, it was promised to be much like Far Harbor was for Fallout 4, and in case you don't know, Far Harbor is often considered the greatest DLC ever made by Bethesda, if not like in the top 3. And when Shattered Space came out not too long ago, this time, it wasn't just the players who hated it, 
the critics weren't too fond of it either. And to rub extra salt in the wounds, the lead writer of Shattered Space, Emil, I really don't want to butcher your last name, I'm sorry, Pagli Rulo, he confirmed on Twitter that many of the writers on Shattered Space have been with BGS since Morrowind. So this isn't just the case of, you know, a lot of the veterans leaving and being replaced by rookies. No, these are the veterans. These are the people who wrote many of our beloved games. And it just seems like maybe they lost the magic. So honestly, I'm left with two questions. Number one, who even cares about The Elder Scrolls 6 at this point? My personal conspiracy theory is that Bethesda announced Elder Scrolls 6 because they were in hot water for like the first time ever. The Elder Scrolls Online launched in 2014 and wasn't received very warmly. It took a couple of years, a couple of updates and expansions for that game to really become beloved. Fallout 4 launched in 2015 and it was generally well liked. I enjoyed Fallout 4, nowhere near as much as their earlier games, but I enjoyed it. But even Fallout 4 had a lot of criticisms for ditching a lot of RPG mechanics. And then we all know what was going to happen when Fallout 76 launched later that year. I personally think that BGS knew they were in a little bit of hot water, knew they were about to be in more hot water thanks to 76, and decided to announce a game that probably didn't even start pre-production. It's really hard to believe that that trailer, if you want to even call it that, released seven years after Skyrim. And now it's been 13 years since Skyrim. And we still don't have much to show for it. We also have reports that the Elder Scrolls 6 will be built on the same engine as Starfield, which the engine was one of the major complaints of that game. A lot of people have criticized Starfield for feeling like the same game that they played in high school, when in reality what we want is those games brought into the modern day lens. And one thing that I have to wonder personally, right? If the game is being worked on now, does that mean that it's supposed to run on the Xbox Series S? Like, is it going to launch on the Series S, X, and the next gen Xbox? Because they do have a history of doing that. Halo Infinite, launched on the series consoles, but also on Xbox One. It's pretty well known by this point that a lot of developers find the Series S very difficult to develop for because it's hard to make your games have ideas that feel truly next gen, current gen really, when you're being held back by weaker hardware. Like how are you supposed to make a game run on the Series X, which is technically a little bit stronger than the base PS5, but also is supposed to run on the Series S? It's a very pro-consumer option to have two choices. I have a Series S, every now and then I go on Game Pass and just see what's on there, but it's gotta be difficult for developers. I hate to say it, but I just really don't care about Elder Scrolls 6 anymore. It's been too long, and if it looks like Starfield, and if it's running on Series S, I definitely don't care about it anymore. And I just can't help but feel like Bethesda thinks they're in a Rockstar-like position. Because much like The Elder Scrolls 6, people have been craving GTA 6 since like two or three years after GTA 5 came out. But the difference between Bethesda and Rockstar is, yes, Rockstar has put out fewer games, but they put out one of the greatest games of all time, Red Dead Redemption 2, whereas you look at Bethesda and they really have not done that. They haven't debatably hit the same heights as Skyrim, and that was 13 years ago. So this brings me to my second and final question. Is Bethesda dead? Of course they're not, right? Because when we hear the name Bethesda, we're instantly transported back to like our teenage years or our early 20s, huddled around our Xbox 360s, getting lost in these amazing fictional worlds. But Bethesda is kind of like that ex-boyfriend or girlfriend who you still follow on social media and you can see that they never really recovered from your breakup with them. They're gaining a lot of weight, they lost their job, they're like dabbling into drugs. It's not looking too good for your ex and it's not looking too good for Bethesda right now. But here's the thing, right? 
I know there are certain people who root for the downfall of certain companies, but that's not the majority. That's not me. I don't want Bethesda to fail. I don't want Bethesda to get closed down. I want Elder Scrolls 6 to feel, to play, to look next gen. I want Bethesda to have their Cyberpunk 2077 moment minus the launch. And while I really don't think Bethesda is dead quite yet, I do think they have one foot in the grave, and that's not good. Thank you for watching my video.